To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles. Will you keep it down? Oh, fizzling fireboxes, Bruce. Can't you see I'm practicing? Yeah, and I'm getting sick of all this Shakespeare rubbish. Why the hell are they holding a tribute festival on soda of all places? Plot convenience. Right, stupid question. Let's go see what the others are doing. I could use a good laugh. O oh, Caesar, hence wilt thou lift up Olympus? Great Caesar, doth not Brutus bootless kneel? Speak hands for me. Et tu, Brute? Hang about, I'm pretty sure he never said that when he was killed. No, he didn't. Then why did Shakespeare add it? For dramatic effect, Henry, this is a play after all, a work of fiction. It's doing a disservice to history. This channel does that on a regular basis. Rehearsal's going well, gentlemen? I just peachy. Out! Out, brief candle! What the hell was that? Sounds like Douglas is getting into it. Life is but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets his hour upon the stage. Then it is heard, no more. It was a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. I'll second that. What pretentious wank piece does that come from, Dougie? The Scottish play, you mean Macbeth? Oh, son of a bitch! Oh yeah! Isn't it bad luck to say Macbeth? I'm gonna enjoy this! Me too! Macbeth! Ow! Serves you right. I'll go see how the girls are doing. Fillet of a finny snake in the cauldron, boil and big, eye of newt and toe of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and howlet's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth, boil and bubble, double, double, double toil and trouble, trouble, fire burn, cauldron and bubble, scale of dragon, tooth of wolf, witch's mummy, moor and gulf, of the raven, sea salt shark, root of hemlock, diggy the dark, liver of blaspheming Jew, gall of goat, the slips of you, silvered in the moon's eclipse, nose of Turk and Tartar's lips, fingers of birth strangled babe, ditch delivered by a drabe, make the gruel thick and slab, add thereto a tiger's children, for the ingredients of our cauldron, double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn, cauldron bowl! <laughs> Okay, I think we might have to cut your part in favour of Romeo and Juliet. Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious as this night, being o'er my head as is a winged messenger of heaven, unto the white, upturned, wandering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him, when he bestrides the lazy, puffing clouds, and sails upon the bosom of the air. Romeo, O oh, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet, shall I hear more or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague? No, I'm Montague. Very good, old chap. And well done, you two. I'm pleased you've been able to work together. I only agree to do this because I'm getting paid. Me too. Right. I guess I better finish off my part then. <coughs> <clears throat> Alas, poor Yurik, I knew him, Horatio, a fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times, and now, how abhorred in my imagination it is, my gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibs now, your gambles, your songs, your flushes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar? Not one now to mock your own grinning, quite chap fallen? Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick. To this favor she must come. Make her laugh at that. Do you have any idea what you just said? Nope. But sound off in the comments if you happen to know. <laughs>